Hey guys, it's Mr. Paul, and today we're going to be talking about the math behind free fall. Um, this first slide, we're talking about free fall speed. This is the formula for free fall. Um, your g is represented by 9.8 meters per second squared, um, and it's acceleration due to gravity. On Earth, it's always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. The T is, stands for time, and that's the amount of time the object's falling. And finally, V stands for speed or velocity. Let's work one of these out. So um, you drop a ball off a cliff and it lands six seconds later. What is the speed of the ball? First thing we need to do is figure out what we're solving for. Since it says speed, what is the speed? We know speed's what we're solving for. So I'm going to be looking for that V. All right? The next thing, I'm going to look for other variables that I can use to solve this question. We know it's, it's um, speed that we're solving for, so I need to find a G or a T. Since I see six seconds up there, I know I have time, so I'm going to write that down first. So it's going to be six seconds, and then I need to find what that G is. Now, since it's on Earth, G is always going to be 9.8 meters per second squared, so I'm going to multiply that by six. Now, I can cross out my seconds and my squared, and when I multiply them together, I'm going to end up with 58.8 meters per second. Let's do a different one. This is average speed, and this is the formula to find that. You use your initial speed plus your final speed, divide it by two, because you have two different times on top of it. All right? And that'll give you your average speed. Let's do a problem with one. So you drop a ball off a cliff and it lands six seconds later. What is the average speed of the ball? First thing I do is I realize I'm looking for average speed. That's what, it asks, it, that's what it's asking for in the question. Um, I have to figure out my final speed first. Um, so I'm going to use the free fall formula to do that. Here it is. And when I ran that, I got 58.8 meters per second. That's my final speed. I'm going to put that down. And then I'm going to add zero to it because our initial speed was zero. Before the ball uh, was dropped, it was in the person's hand, okay? And it was just at rest. It was at zero. So when I add those two together, and then I'm going to divide by two after I add them together because there's two different times there. When I divide that by two, I get an average time of 29.4 meters per second. Okay, now... After you find average velocity, one of the things you can do with it is you can plug that into the distance formula and you can actually find distance. But you can only do that with average velocity. So usually you'll have to figure out your, your initial speed and your final speed. And then you're going to take your final speed and you're going to plug that into the average uh, velocity or average speed formula. Once you get the average speed or average velocity, then you're going to plug it into the distance formula. And that's what we're going to do next. So it's average speed times time equals distance. Let's work one out. So we're going to start keep with the same that we've been doing. We have our six seconds that our ball's been dropped off that cliff. How far did the ball fall? Since we're looking for far, we're looking for distance. Okay. Um, first thing we're going to do is find our final speed. And we've done that a few times now. So there it is. 58.8 meters per second. Now I need to find the average speed next. So I'm going to take that and divide it by 2 and add the initial speed, which is 0. Uh, that's going to give me 29.4 meters per second. Now I'm going to plug that in and multiply it by 6. Okay? So 29.4 meters per second, that's our average velocity, times uh, time, which is 6. Um, when I multiply those two together, I will end up with uh, 176.4 meters. Okay. This is our formula for weight. Um, this is our weight over here. The force of gravity is our weight. This is mass. And this is um, gravity, which is 9.8. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my mass, so it's going to be 100 kilograms. Multiply that by 9.8. And I'm going to cross out my kilograms there. I'm going to cross out my kilograms there. 
and that leaves me with 980 newtons. All right. I hope this was beneficial to you. Um, if you didn't get it, go back and watch it. And if there's some things that are still not making sense after you watch it the second time, you might want to go back and watch the terms and vocabulary uh, video over this stuff. See you guys.